It's Wednesday, June 29th, and it's time that the Supreme Court had its ass kicked. And that can be done under the Constitution. And that can be done by Congress, if Congress has the will to do that action. There are several things that can be done by Congress that would kick the ass of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court does not exist above the constitutional system. It can't possibly shape constitutional order. It can say what the Constitution means, but it cannot protect itself from the power of the other branches. So the Supreme Court can be checked. The Supreme Court can be balanced. Many believe in this country that the Supreme Court is a solid, rock-solid institution that can't be touched, that nothing can be done about the reactionary majority that exists on the court. But that's not true. The Constitution provides a number of ways in which Congress can restrain and discipline an unruly Supreme Court. I call it unruly, but it's probably really a rogue court. I hope all of you know that when the Supreme Court was first formed, there were only six members. And eventually it got to be nine. And when President Roosevelt in the 30s was forming the New Deal to rally this country, the Supreme Court was an obstacle. And so he threatened to pack the court. And that got them straightened out, and that allowed him to go ahead with the New Deal. All of his proposals for the New Deal then went through the court. So you can threaten the court, and you can do those, execute those threats if necessary. So the size of the court is not sacrosanct. It can be changed, which means you could pack it or increase the size, but you can also unpack it. And I believe that this court deserves to be unpacked. How would that feel if we cut it back to five or six? What would happen to the rogue majority then? Another thing that can happen to the court is that justices can be impeached and removed. So there are certain physical ways to do it. And the court can be stripped of jurisdiction over certain issues. It can weaken the power of the judicial review by requiring a supermajority of justices to sign off on any decision that overturns a law. Now, I am not sure what a supermajority means, but I suspect it means that you have to have 100% approval of any action that you're going to take. And Congress can also rebuke the court by legislation that simply cancels a decision in question. So if this court continues on its route, on its reactionary route, Congress could take any one of these actions to suppress the court. But I'm sorry to say that this particular Congress is suffering from politics. In spite of the actions of this court, and in spite of the fact that it is almost totally lacking in democratic legitimacy, there's no appetite in the Democratic Party for a fight over the nature of the court and its place in our constitutional system. The Democrats don't have the courage to fight. They don't have the collusions that President Roosevelt had. So the court is getting away with murder right now. Something has to be done, but I believe it will take a lot of time and a lot of effort to get that particular thing done. It takes time to build the power and the consensus needed to make significant changes to the court. But the work in doing that would be well worthwhile because this court stands as a creditable threat to the future of this country. So right now, this Supreme Court acts as if it stands above constitutional system and is unaccountable to anyone except itself. In my mind, the biggest loss is not the Roe versus Wade decision, but the decision on the New York State concealed carry law. When Justice Thomas and the rest of them misinterpret the meaning of the words in the Second and the Fourteenth Amendment, 
that allow our unstable population to continue carrying guns is a gross miscarriage of justice. The meaning of the words in the Second and the Fourteenth Amendment are twisted to whatever they believe that they want the decision to be. In Thomas's mind, he wants people to carry guns, and therefore he misinterprets the entire wording of the Constitution. And those people who agree with him follow meekly along. There's no reason in the world why you can't issue certain stiff requirements in order to carry a gun. Not, but not in these United States. Not with a court like this. Not where the Constitution is misinterpreted. Words have meanings, and those meanings are getting twisted regularly, and never more so than this recent group in the Supreme Court. So I don't know what Congress will do if they'll do anything about the quality of the court. Are we going to wait 20 or 30 years till these people pass on? And at that point, this country will be a shambles? I think not. I hope not. And so I leave you with that this morning. A very disheartening discussion. Bye.